Welcome to the Bridge of Truth. My special guest this evening is Anthony Citro. Frequent visitors to my YouTube channel will probably recognize him from the, uh, the many videos that we've done. Um, we've created a series of videos on the energies of creation and Anthony was actually uh, one of the guests on my very, very first show with Stephanie Azaria. And it was interesting that the uh, topic that evening was um, the astrological uh, guidepost for 2012. And the discussion ended up uh, steering towards uh, what Anthony called the ascension process. <laughs> and um, I thought that with 2012, the, uh, the end of the Mayan calendar now approaching, it would be a great time to have Anthony come back and to get a little bit more deeper into it. So much has happened in the last two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and particularly on the, on, the, on the global level, we can see that happening everywhere. Um, and so that's why when, when we decided we were thinking about having a, a, a discussion this evening, um, the idea of talking about the ascension process in the context of global unrest would be a, a, a great topic for us uh, at this point. So Anthony, uh, perhaps we can start with that, if you can talk about that a little bit just from the layman's perspective. Sure, we got a couple <laughs> a couple years or so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me back. I appreciate it and welcome and hello everybody. Uh, wow, you know, all these things are so huge, these concepts and um, what we're learning as Adam Cadmon sentient human beings as we awaken, as we open up and evolve, is to accept our multidimensionality. So I thought I would try to uh, paint a picture in as simple as way that I can, mm -hmm. because the concept is so huge, in how to take a step back and how to uh, be more of an observer and understand from source perspective what is going on in, in global unrest, what's going on in the world and why it's going on to better navigate how to not go into fear and how to stay more in compassionate detachment and how to be more of an observer so that you can create a better reality for yourself moment to moment and be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And it's all about, as, as many light workers know and are aware, is a shift in consciousness. Consciousness is what is going to shift things, not an action. Um, so. You know, when we talked about what to talk about, you know, we, we talked about it and I, I thought, well, with everything going on, the polarization on every level of our being from the American presidential election to the Real Housewives <laughs> to uh, what's going on in the cosmos, every level to quantum physics and what's being discovered, uh, the level of quarks all the way to uh, religion, every area of our existence is shifting at a hyper accelerated rate and so what does the human being do who feels insignificant small within the scheme of things we tend to unless you become involved and master yourself which is what the ascension process is and thank you for i didn't coin the term ascension process you give me way too much credit you know ascension right. process is a let's say an umbrella term for um how we are evolving at this point and coming to a collective state of shifting and in the mass consciousness and in the individual consciousness to more love and light and, le and less dark and not love. Let's, let's simplify it at that level because I could throw out terminology and people can, or you can say, well, what does that mean to the average person? And part of the problem with spirituality is the past 25 years, and we talked about this in the first episode, the harmonic convergence and how the galactic alignment started really right at that point and now you know we're not two years away we're not ten years away we're not five months away we are two months away technically from this all-important date but as Stephanie uh, pointed to and alluded to in the last uh, interview with you that she did and others know the ascension is already unfolding the mass consciousness is focused at that December 21st 2012 and so not a time delay but a time distortion is created on a collective level 
of people waiting for something to happen at that point when things are actually unfolding. So as things are unfolding and people aren't ready for it, what they do is they go into a space more of resistance, usually unless they're able to master staying their heart, keeping their heart open, and the resistance ratchets up. And you have that all levels from the light worker who has to go through their own strong process to be able to sit in a chair like this and even give an interview like this. God knows my process was uh, intense and still is ongoing, but I've come to the point enough where I'm able to move past any of my considerations and maintain and a certain amount of equanimity while everything is roiling around me to be more in service. And this is, it took a lot out of me and I'm still a work in progress every day. I'm certainly nowhere near mastering my stuff as you will. Uh, but it's in the intention of doing so. It's in the, the willingness to go there to really proactively do something beyond processing that is the key to ascension process because the more light I can hold or you can hold or whoever is in a position to hold in any level of society, any level of life to affect a greater uh, inspiration, a greater reverberance to others who are recalcitrant or are lost or coming along the way, it's a reverberating effect. You so see? What, what you say then ascension is an elevation in consciousness, and that's perhaps something that humanity has been doing since its birth? Well, we, they, they've they been trying, they haven't succeeded. <laughs> so yeah. now we're supposed to really get it right. right. Uh, and there's still more to do after that. Uh, it's, it's interesting, an example is that people are still reaching for a, a goal, a physical effect of the ascension. And interestingly enough, today, I'm waiting to get on, getting ready to come here, and what am I watching unfold me um, on CNN? This guy, Felix Baumgartner, who's taken this dive for all the way up 125,000 feet in the you know, air, mm. all the way down. So how are the CNN de describing it? Well, he's ascending. Mm. He's going into the ascension. And now he's descending. And now he's coming down to earth. And I was so struck me, like, wow, I can't believe I'm watching this. This is somebody in one sense of the word because I, don't, I would never cast aspersions on his uh, consciousness, who is trying to reach for that which he already has. So people are always reaching to do something, particularly male energy in the physical plane, to create an effect. But what we should be looking at is our inner plane. So whether you value what he did or didn't do or think it's crazy, it just struck me how odd that it served the purpose to awaken on some level a further opening to the need to ascend and descend because mm -hmm. ascension is really a descension is spiritualizing matter into form it's not something physical it reverberates in the physical and and translates from the physical out according to divine will wherever divine wants you to be in service and it has a, a osmosis effect a reverberating effect but it's really spiritual and so um most of us have been so tied and this is where i want to get into tonight if i can because God knows I could be here all night talking about this. Um, and I thought, well, should I talk about this, should I talk about that? And I really thought to talk briefly, if I can, about the dimensional shift, because dimensionality, the dimensions, multidimensional, all that stuff can really uh, translate on a practical level to the layperson, if you will, as consciousness shifting, because we already are source. As Sai Baba said, I'm God, you are God. The only difference between you and I is I know that already used to always say that. And so he was able to hold this intense uh, consciousness and able to create all these miracles and so forth and so on that people talk about. Of course, some people debunk, you know, as usual. But he really did have uh, this ability to sustain a consciousness that he was of divine and so are all of you. Right. It wasn't just, I'm great, I'm great, you're not. You know, it wasn't anything to do with that, which is why he's, he's an avatar. So he held that energy for people to mirror to them, right? So we are all aspiring to that, not to be Sai Baba, but we're all aspiring to hold that consciousness on our own. Well, that would be true whether you're a Christian. Of and course, you, it's not you're, to do well, religion. You know, and you're yeah. trying to aspire to be as most Christ-like as you can, yes. or a, a Muslim would want to Absolutely. be as much as... This is not about common. religion, and, and Baba was the first one to say, and that's whatever just, religion... E that person represents the ideal for that particular faith, yeah. and each Th faith... This is not about an argument about religion. God <clears throat> right. knows I don't want to get into that. This is, you know, even Sai Baba said, um, whatever religion you're in, be good. In fact, he was the only religious spiritual leader 
that for his logo, he had all the major religions surrounding his logo. He was the only one that did that, that embraced that, that for all his life. So it well, isn't I think about... I might actually do but maybe, that. Maybe, uh, maybe yeah. you're right. I, and I, that, I and actually, sure. the more modern, even traditional religions are seeing that more and more. I yeah. think that's part of the Well, because of people are waking up. On yes, all yes, yes. And uh, so the point is, is that it's not about religious thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being able to, I'm using this example because my teacher was his student, we were sure. very connected. Uh, and there are very few people that have held that, you know, a handful of people like Ama and that hold that so consciously that strongly, that are that much of a mirror in a public sense. Uh, so anyway, we're all aspiring to that on some level within our own self, which is why we're drawn to these people and you may have your flavor and this one might like that one, it's fine. Uh, they'd be the first one to tell you I'm not better than anybody else. So it's really not about that. So the point is, it good that this little heated thing, if you will, came up because this is where we're at now. We were in 3D, it's called. Mm -hmm. First, you have your first dimensional, which is like the submicrobial and all that, the quantum, all that. Then you have your second level, let's say, which is the, 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 the um, elemental level, right? Then you have the 3D, which is the human level, you know, your, your existence. This is a wooden table. This is a body. If I cut, I bleed, right? You live, you die, whatever. Uh, and then you have the fourth dimensional, which is sort of the astral level. And then you have the fifth dimensional reality, which is unconditional love. And then the way we have evolved as a race, as humanity, if you will, at this point, is to be able to ascend while we're in our physical body, which has never been able to happen before. And so this is why people are going through this intense process. Sometimes I say, I feel like the American werewolf in London, I'm, you know, you're going through all these morphines, the pains in the neck, the swollen right. ankles, the ups and downs, the hot and cold, the sleep and not sleeping. All this is part of everybody's experience, whether they're conscious of ascension or not. Uh, the thing is, the more conscious you are, the more you can allow it and be okay with it and expand your consciousness and then help others, which is why I do the work I do. Uh, to help people simply access the energy's creation. And I, I will say, and this is not, uh, he didn't tell me to do this, you have such a great role in that, at least as far as my little uh, uh, projects are concerned, because your service to help put on these videos that I can never do without you is just so, I'm so grateful for it. So I appreciate um, that. it really is an important service. Um, and, you know, for some reason, we're getting all these people watching it right, on right. YouTube, which is great. And people are move, loving it. And that's fantastic. So it's all great. It's all in service. It's all out there. Um, and that's fantastic. But it's really about helping people simply and easily access that which they felt they were separate from. And the whole point is from the harmonic convergence, let's say, which is 25 years ago, when the Mahatma energy came in, when things started heating up astrologically. And of course, Stephanie could speak to that. I couldn't. Um, the more these things hyper accelerated. So what happened 25 years ago was vastly different than what happened all those 200, 300 years before that, and then 1,000 years before the Dark Ages. What's happening from 25 years to 15 years was vastly different between that period. What's happening now between five years ago is vastly different. Well, that's the exponential growth, and actually science is observing that themselves, mm -hmm. because um, when they look at the advancement of technology, that's really on an exponential curve and, and they say that we're really just starting to make that that curve up and what's going to happen within the next period of time whether it's 25 or 50 years is probably beyond even our imagining and uh, who knows where we may be spiritually exactly uh, two things I'd like to say first of all it was interesting that CNN used uh, the metaphor of ascension and descension mm -hmm. for something that's physical but it makes me realize that that's our goal. Each person is always trying to achieve. I mean, you watch the Olympics to see somebody break a world record. And I think that all of us, whether it be on the physical level or people that are trying to evolve and be better or grow more spiritually, it seems to be part of the human nature to, to, to grow and ascend on both levels. Well, this is, well, but this is the problem. <clears throat> this is the, the problem. There's, it's crunch time. Yes, is already unfolding. Yes, 212 is just a date. But yet, at the same time, things are unfolding. Things are speeding up. The, the source, source, undifferentiated source, God, whatever you want to say, goddess, whatever you want to say, in its infinite capacity for love, is consistently spoon-feeding us, no matter how much we F up, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. And so we're way behind where we are expected to be on one hand, even though a lot of spiritual people say, well, you're supposed to be where you are and all this stuff. That's a sort of physical, practical side of it. Mm -hmm. But in the, this bigger scheme of things, the plane's already taken off. 
if you will. You're either on the plane or you're standing on this runway with your baggage wondering when the next plane is going to come and it's not coming. So that being said, it really, the pressure is being put on the same time that the source is continuing to spoon feed us and still hold us and still give us another chance. Now, the what I point I want to make is... Well, when you say that, it's sort of like you're implying that there's a conscious decision on the part of Source to actually be doing that. There's some people that wouldn't even acknowledge that level of participation. Well, it's not about a conscious Source. It's not about a conscious choice. The point is, it's like if you're a parent and you have a child and you're trying to teach them to ride a bike, at some point you have to let go of the handle and let them go down the street whether they fall or not. But that's still but, an intelligence that's doing that. Of course, yeah. but you're still gonna go and pick that child up. You're not gonna, oh, well, he got run over by a car, forget it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the point is, is the point is we are at a crunch time. Yeah. We're at a huge transitional point. And the way I wanna explain it, if I can, in this hour, because it, it's so huge, these concepts to yeah. try to yeah. narrow down is to say we're in the 3D. Now we've shifted from 3D reality into fourth dimensional reality. What does that mean? Some spiritual people say we're in fifth dimensional reality, and I say, well, that's wacky because if we were all in fifth dimensional unconditional love, none of this would be going on. Exactly. We're headed there. Some people, as Hard. these avatars, sustain that for the rest of us as much as they can till we come up which is what a spiritual teacher and of I high vibration we does. All, we all, or at least mo many of us, have those moments. Of course. And then we fall of, back. Of and course, we're know, human. Depending upon what's going on. Exactly. With, with the global crisis. Well, I'm going to explain <laughs> why. personal it, crisis for I'm, that matter. I'm going to explain <laughs> why that is, because I think mm -hmm. this is where people can sort of have a little help of why it's going on. It is part of the divine plan, but there's also a reason behind it. And I think if we can grasp why, it's easier to navigate. This is why I want to try to accomplish tonight if I could. And so you're in this fourth dimensional reality. The earth herself is ascending. We have to stop thinking of the earth as a ball of dirt, third rock from the sun, worms and a couple trees on it. The earth is a living organism. It's part of source. We are all connected. It's part of us. We return to earth. We come from earth in a sense. The earth sustains us. We've abused the earth for so long. And now the earth is also ascending in the cosmos. That's why all the extraterrestrial energy is garnered here because there is in a sense a grand experiment a grand observation of what's going on because it affects and reverberates galactically what happens here because not because the earth is better or special it's because of what the process is at this time mm -hmm. which has happened many times all over in other planets or whatever you want to say but that's a whole nother discussion right. so we're here now we're here now it doesn't matter who you were in another lifetime who you're going to be here you're here now you're in this body you're focused in a physical body you're focused into form to carry out your part of the divine plan, whatever that may be, a housewife, janitor, president, exactly. whatever. So you're going along that or you're resisting it. We're coming to a point because of the way the earth is ascending and the fourth dimensional reality. What fourth dimensional reality does is it sharpens duality. So we're in duality. We just had the fourth ray workshop, the green ray. And it's all about balance through harmony and chaos. And it's the balance, it's a ray that really brings it in. The reason it's not fully anchored on the earth here is because we're not ready to receive that, that experience fully. So we touch on it. But that's a whole other subject. But the point is, the earth itself is shedding its etheric crust, if you will. So imagine all these years of abuse, abuse, abuse. Imagine you're eating all this junk food, junk food, junk food, junk food. What do you need to do after a while? You need to, pardon my crudeness, be burp. So the earth has taken a big spiritual burp, mm. and for want of a better word, uh, and when that we do it, you just, oh, that's gross, and you walk away. Yeah. When, the, when the earth does it, a couple thousand people die, or <laughs> a volcano erupts. So there's, there's these consequences to what's going on. Yeah, I like to say that it's just the earth going about its business of being the earth. I mean, you know, yeah. whether it be uh, tsunamis or massive earthquakes, uh, the issue well, then becomes when humanity is actually a affecting the, the Earth's natural process. Well, it is affecting it through the consciousness it holds because we're all connected. So this is what we're coming to learn. So the fourth dimensional reality, duality is sharpened, which means if you say I'm ugly, everybody's going to think you're ugly overnight. If you say, boy, I think I'm going to die tomorrow, you will likely die tomorrow. It's coming to that place where if you said it a hundred years ago, it may not happen, manifest right away. Sort of like the, the secret, you know, I want an elephant and the elephant comes in the room and starts dumping all over the carpet. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't want the elephant right now. You know, but it's getting to the point where- well, You only wanted the good part. I only wanted the good part. <laughs> <laughs> or you want a Lamborghini, all of a sudden Lamborghini falls on your, your wife there and it kills her. <laughs> but the point is, is that 
uh, I have to get back to the point is that we are creating our reality moment to moment. So source, while it is spoon feeding us, it is also putting the pressure on as a good parent would. It is making us stand on our own through various ways and methods. And the time for when tough love come is, is really almost at nigh because the earth is going to ascend. And what happens is a certain amount of radiation has to be released because as the earth ascends and sheds the earth crust, the planet actually on a physical level gets irradiated on some level. And so we have to withstand a higher level of radiation, a higher level of spiritual energy inputted directly consciously on us all the time. People know when they go to a workshop and they get whacked for an hour and they, oh my God, I got to go out of here. How about having that every day, 24 hours a day, that constant downloading? which is what the galactic alignment is. If the galactic alignment comes more into focus, this area, the mouth of God, is being activated. You're getting downloaded all the time. And you're either resisting it and, and causing pain, or you're accepting it and embracing it and opening up and allowing yourself to be downloaded in, in, in whatever way. Uh, energetically, it, it translates in the physical way different for everybody else. But again, if you're conscious of it as a light worker, you in service can direct, or I'm sorry, allow to have source direct through you to a positive end and be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Because Source is trying to show us, look, you used to co-create your reality with me. Now I'm letting you on your own, and now you're going to create your reality and be fully responsible for it. That's a huge shift because we've abused that in power all these years. And we could see that there any world leader yeah. throughout history in any religion, culture, anything. I mean, it's because we weren't ready to do that. So now the enlightened leaders that are coming in, these young kids that are being born. I have a lot of kids in my life, babies that I, I love. They're not mine, but they're friends and stuff. These kids are like like children of the, uh, the village of the dam. They're so corn. They're so highly vibrational. Mm -hmm. They're so highly aware. I mean, in a good way. <laughs> Bad way. You know, they're almost like they lay bore right through you with consciousness and they, they know everything. Uh, and this is how it's going to be. Kid, people are going to be incarnated at three years old being able to move mountains. And so that's showing us um, the next generation after this will be that. And our generation, if you will, for want of a better word, uh, you know, who's, who's watching this, who's, who's aware now, is really at the point where we are saying, we are getting opened up and saying, okay, I have responsibility to create my reality. I'm in this fourth dimensional stage. And the reason the fourth dimension sharpens reality because the astral levels open and what's physical and what's not, there's, a, there's, where am I? Sometimes you feel like you're walking down the street, you're going, where am I? You don't feel like you're in reality. You're like walking through soup almost because so much is shifting in such a short amount of time, but that's to get us to bypass our intellectual resistance and experience divinity on earth. It's not just, oh, you know, happy-go-lucky. It's a real process. It's a real shedding. It's a real surrender. It's a real release. It's a real change in everything and every aspect of our conscious and life. So to get to that fifth dimensional reality of unconditional love, that's why a lot of even animal populations are dying off because there can't be that kill and be killed anymore in fifth dimensional reality. So even animal nature will have to shift. But of course, that's the most recalcitrant to shift because their consciousness is generally lower than ours, except for, of course, the dolphins and certain species. But most of their consciousness and the way they're able to, we have more ability to change directly consciously and affect that than, say, you know, a kitten, kitten does uh, or a gopher. But... Um, you know, the, the point is we have to constantly maintain a level of compassion detachment, but yet not bury our head in the sand and say that's their journey. We have to find the way to be in service. And the whole point is this duality is sharpening all across the board. And you see it quite clear in the American presidential election, the way people are reacting. You see it, like I said, in these real reality shows. You see it um, in the way planets are born and die every day. They're discovering galaxies that are merging in blue. I mean, every level of existence is in this heightened space of duality. And what's a person to do in that? There's no comfort zone. And see, this is the problem. Source, is, source perspective is trying to show us, forget your comfort zone. Let me be your comfort zone. And often, uh, you know, Carolyn Meese, Miss, Miss, I believe, says, um, you're not secure, some, I'm paraphrasing, of course, you're not secure until you accept the chaos mm. that's inherent in nature. So in other words, it's about going with the flow. So now once people maintain, the, let's say once 90% of people maintain a 51% consistent ascension process, if you will, a uh, uh, sufficient level of consciousness, everybody else will fold into that. 
and things will really start to shift. Now, unfortunately, as Stephanie alluded to in our first interview way back in the garage, remember, that, um, was a lot of people are not able to do that. So they're, they're choosing ways to die. They're choosing ways to leave the planet. They're going to another third dimensional reality. For some reason, um, from a soul perspective, they are not ready for whatever reason to be here now present with that shift but that's also part of the divine plan part of the shift when something leaves something comes in so all of these things there's so much interplay going on in so many levels the only thing a human being can do is say bring me my plan what do you have me do lord or source whatever you want to say let me know and this is what contacting the energy creation all about simply and easily accessing the energy which is you it's not something separate from you and saying, okay, what do you want me to do? And getting it. And once you get it to the point where it's just flowing, then things can start to shift. Why? Because your intention from that alignment with source, that simple alignment with source, pure, not religious, not cultural, not ancestral, pure, immediate, in the moment, in the now, coming through and informing you, however it does, energetically, telepathically, physically, impulse, whatever it is, maybe presents an experience, an opportunity, anyway, is how your ascension is unfolding. It's the key, because everything is through intention. Because if God is saying to you, okay, I'm giving you more power now. I'm letting you create your reality. What are you going to do with it? Let me show me what you're going to do with it. And so this is where we're at now. So we have to show daddy and mommy how we are going to create our reality and, and make them proud and do a great job well, and help people. You talk about tough love and the creator sort of presenting us with these challenges as a form of tough love. And, I, and it seems to me that the, that corresponds with what we see now as a real global crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you, if you see a movie like Thrive or a movie like Home, and I mm -hmm. recommend that viewers watch Home it. Home is they're, fantastic. They're available on the internet. Thrive talks about uh, the, the global crisis from the financial perspective. A home deals more with the uh, ecolo ecological ramifications of that. But we don't have a lot of time. And I think one of the reasons that I have felt compelled to do shows with people like Anthony to create the Bridge of Truth was because I, I felt like we just don't have the time. We can't sit around and wait. And, and perhaps that what's, that's what makes this particular series of global crises be different from the way they've occurred throughout humanity, because somebody may come up to you and say, well, Anthony, I'm sorry, isn't it, how is this different than, than let's say, World War I? Or, or, uh... Well, it's not so much that it's different, it's a culmination. It's a culmination where equipoise, it's like being on the top of a roller coaster. I say this in my ad for the 12-12 Stargate workshop, which actually, this year, 12-12-12 is an extremely important time to do any kind of spiritual work. Wherever you are, if you're sitting in your home, just do something. Um, you know when you're at that tip, you're going up the roller coaster, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to do this, I can't do this. And you're right at that point where you're ready to go over. Now, it's going to go over. Right. You can either, ah, or you can let the G-forces take you and throw your hands up there like six flags and enjoy it. And really, that's where we're at. But people are still not accepting that fully. And so, every which way, the ego, which is its job, tries to tear it down, tries to divide, tries to separate, tries to go into fear, tries to compartmentalize the situation, tries to justify, rationalize, tries to say, no, I can do this and do that. And that all adds to the delay, if you will, of the unfolding of the divine plan in some sense. But that, what I want to get to is that, that is even part of the divine plan too. Mm -hmm. Because where we are at now is that heightened space duality. Source is literally shifting and sifting us like rocks looking for the gold. And we might, from a source perspective, that's a great thing, but it certainly doesn't feel that way when you're going through it on the physical plane. So it's not to be uh, masochistic and say, well, that's, that's God and I have to just accept it any more than you, you know, uh, go out and fight against it. There's nothing physical you can do. You can go all you, all you want up in a spaceship, all you want to climb the mountains, all you want to do all these things. It's really about accepting source in the moment and allowing source to define you rather than you trying to define your place within the scheme of source, which is what we've been doing all these years, what we're doing all these millennia. And so in the short amount of time, we're shifting that focus. Now, some people are more able to do it, probably because they've had experience before and they've come into this incarnation mm. to show the way. And I've also said many times, this generation is like Moses. You know, we're going to be like Moses going to the promised land and probably never getting in it. But we have the grace of God taking us at the right moment for all the great work we've done, healing our karma, experiencing directly God in the physical now when other people aren't even aware of it as much. You know what I'm saying? 
and helping others do it. And if we come back in another form, we'll, we'll experience the luxury of being in the golden age, maybe. But our job, we contracted to be here, to be way showers, to, to lead the way. And that's part of our process. Now, this fourth dimensional uh, sharpening that's going on, so we come to fifth dimensional reality, and all the processes we're going through, and all the way the Earth is shifting, and the galactic alignment, and all the way uh, Source is informing so many people on so many different levels, and all the things going on, is to get us eventually to sixth dimensional reality on some point, which is not being in a physical body, really. A fifth dimensional reality, you're in a physical body, but you're almost like liquid light, we say. So we're not there yet either. So the point is, it's not about reaching a goal, it's about unfolding in the now, whatever it is, because whether you're in 10th dimensional reality, 12th dimensional reality, 2nd dimensional reality, 3rd, 4th, you're still connecting a line with Source. And all you can do as a human being to navigate all this craziness going on within yourself, within the world, and within your own awareness of what's going on, is to know and always feel and always go back that you are aligned with Source. You are it's like a spiritual lifeline. That's why I say the energy of creation are like these spiritual lifelines. So to get to try to get this into the global scene and if you have any questions you can ask me of course I'll, I'll answer as best I can um, you're seeing a ratcheting up of resistance so the new paradigm that's coming in of love of the we as opposed to the I of you being the creator instead of devotionally seeking to the creator to guide you all of this is the old dogma, the old, a lot of it, 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 religion is just a form, a mirror of that consciousness. Right. Uh, it's not about religion's good or bad or technology's good or bad. It's the misuse and the attachment to the ritual that no longer serves in any area of life that is, is, is not as productive as if you just said, source be with me. So um, you see the stream terrorism ratcheting up as a reaction that a 14 year old girl was shot in a bus by these three grown men because she's trying to she's sticking up for girls uh you know and this is 2012 in the american political scene elizabeth warren great hopefully she becomes senator great woman. why are we fighting about abortion rights in 2012 and rights for women I mean, it's ridiculous i mean but yet here we are still having this strong divide if you will i don't want to say republican democrat and get political we're having this strong divide of what a a right is not. Does a gay person have a right? Does this? Does a woman can? You know, I mean, as if we were in two thousand years ago in a desert somewhere. You have these people in Mid East that are still trying to impose grievous uh, oppression on people. Now, whether they're they can hide behind religion all they want. The point is, you know, if you're beating a woman within an inch of her life because she's showing an ankle, I'm old lady, and you're and you and you're doing an auditorium full of a thousand men. What do you call that? You know, uh, so I mean, this is the consciousness, and it's all because of these people, if you will, are attached to their way. They're attached to their desires, their needs, their control, and it's not working anymore. It's not what the new paradigm is. So that new paradigm is going to come in as it has been, and people like this 14 year old girl will step up, and she unfortunately contracted to take the brunt of that karmically. So she's a, that's part of her role. Uh, and of course, you still send her compassion, but it is part of her karmic role to, to bring light to the situation. So you have these, con we're in, the point I'm trying to make is we're in the thrust of that shift. I'm trying to avoid talking about the rays because that's a whole other topic. I know you're going to ask me to, no, it's... what the rays are. But um, the divine rays of creation, if you will, are the streams of God's consciousness that come into the physical and create everything around us. We perceive them as rays. We say like rays from the sun. But it's really streams of consciousness. So throughout periods of history, certain ones we call cycle in and focus to do a part of the divine plan, and then they cycle out and the other one comes in. They're all there all the time because we're, you know, certain focuses. So the sixth ray of creation, which was the dominant ray for the past 2,000 years of devotion and idealism, which Jesus was the avatar of that uh, age, is receding strongly since the 30s. The effect of that ray's dominance, if you will, is receding. And the seventh ray, the golden age of light, the violet flame returning, is coming in, which is the we consciousness, which is allowing the ascension and the shift. But it's so we're smack dab in it. So we may only see in our experience and what the hell's going on in all our, our life, but source is just doing its thing. And as it's receding, subconsciously, those who are attached to that paradigm of 2,000 years that are resistant are reacting and overreacting to try to keep it going. 
and the, but the new is still coming in. It has to come in. There has to be a shift. There has to be a change. And so there's always 150 to 200 year sort of uh, strong change when one ray energy cycles out of focus and one comes in until it balances out. And so that's where we're at. And, and I know it's a lot to talk about in one hour, but we're directly in that space where, as my teacher Derek O'Neill says, the only thing to expect is consistent from now on is change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at first I grasped with that. I'm like, what the heck does that mean? You know, but after a while, I, I got it. And that was that you have to be in that space of divine equanimity, if you will, as much as possible. That has to be your goal, not to to hold it like the old paradigm was on a mountain for 30 years meditating, but actually in real time. Your life has to be your moving meditation of being in the flow and, and no matter what happens, because you will have now, as you awaken, more and more power and more and more empowerment to create a different reality. And are you going to focus on the negative and keep creating that? You know, as The Secret talks about, and, 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 you know, Esther Hicks, one of the greatest channels on the planet, Abraham channels through her very efficiently, that, you know, look, if you keep focusing on what you don't want, guess what's going to happen? How many times we got to tell you? And that they keep telling people over and over again because people have a hard time getting that because we always focus on what we don't want. If someone tells you you're beautiful, but there's spinach in your teeth, what are you going to focus on? Oh my God, she said I had spinach in my teeth. They're not going to focus on that, the 20 good things they said about you. It's just been human nature. But that has to shift. So as those things are shifting and we're becoming more secure, and the only way to do that is to accept the energy of creation, to accept that you are source, to connect more consciously with source, however you do it. You want to say source white light and just see white light? That's fine. You know, if you want to connect specifically with the violet flame and work with that or the Mahatma or the rays and you're aware of that, great. And that's why I'm doing the work I'm doing, but not everybody's ready to do that. There's some spiritual organizations that are very well established that in their credo don't even deal with the higher rays because it's too confusing, which is the craziest thing I ever heard. Because that's exactly where we need to be focused on is the higher rays. The divine gave them to us to accelerate our process and make it easier. And in many ways it's happening. For instance, uh, the color of the eighth ray is green violet. So all this Aurora Borealis stuff and lights that they're posting on Facebook, they're all green violet. And I'm posting to everybody, oh, this is the eighth ray in action purifying the planet. Because that is supposed to. So everything's a manifestation of source energy on some level. Whether you're aware of the technical, what it means or not is irrelevant. You could feel it. You don't have to know everything. If even myself, if I were to stop and try to know everything, I would blow up. Somehow this stuff gets channeled through me and I just go with it because I feel it. And I have a desire and a willingness to help in service as best I can to allow others to believe you could feel this too. You can experience this too. It's not something removed from you. It's not that hard. You know, when the, uh, when the, when the stuff first came in, in 25 years ago in alignment with the harmonic convergence, like the prophets like Elizabeth Clare Prophet and uh, literally was named Prophet, Brian Grattan, they brought in the this stuff about the violet flame and, and, and they brought in stuff about the Muhammad. It was like building a computer. When you first build a computer, you put everything in the, in the computer, all the information. But you, 25 years later, if you want a piece of data, you just put your thing in and you get the piece of data. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's in there. You're not focused on what's in there. If you were, you would go nuts. You're just trying to get a piece of information. So similarly, spiritually, people get so bogged down in this old fashioned terminology that no longer is valid. And even in my own spiritual community, even in, as a spiritual person, I'm really, uh, even though I'm not an outsider, I, I, mean, I actually have my finger really on the pulse if I say so myself. I know it sounds egotistical, but I make myself be there. Um, actually, I'm considered somewhat of an uh, a f outsider because people don't focus on that. People want, still want the illusion, still want the show, still want the easy way, the, the sort of... Uh, you know, burn a sage, be, beat a drum, call to the moon, and then that's it. Source is ever presenting us with the opportunity to know itself. Source is ever presenting us with the opportunity to know itself. But you, not to know it intellectually and to dissect and analyze it. So all these terms in these books that are out there, for instance, the violet flame, and this is not to disparage anybody. Back then, that was necessary. Now, 25 years later, it's not necessary. But people still have an attachment because there's money involved. There's an ideology involved. There's a, a many years that they were with someone or some system. And it's not that it's bad. If it's nothing in integrity is bad, it's that it doesn't serve 
to say more vial of fire a million times like a nail on a board and waste energy when you can just say vial of flame, please be with me. And so I've had a really hard time and really projection and really difficulty because of a lot of resistance with that. And I accept that. That's part of my path. And I've had to learn my lessons of releasing judgment and letting things be at the same time bringing in what I need to bring in. Because eventually something may replace easily what I'm doing and be even easier. You know, so everything I do, I try to do the simplest, easiest possible way so people can access it. And I encourage them, don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it. Don't over-ritualize your connection with source. You don't have to go to expensive levels upon levels of training, diamond level four, this, and pay somebody 3000 here, then come back four months. No, <laughs> you just have to connect with the energies of creation. All our work we do is free. We do that in service. Ariel's great art, great artist. She denotes all those images, you know. Uh, she doesn't have to do that. We're doing that in service and people watching these and they're so thankful and grateful because there's no rigmarole. So the point is we're not fully there yet. And the thing is that and everything else that's going on in the world and the unrest, every level in between is indicative of exactly the mirror of where we are. People are in that chart. They want to stay with the old, but yet they want the new. So it creates on every level of consciousness, every level of creation, this rub this, this raw, like rubbing on a blackboard, rather than this cohesive, let's embrace everything, simplify everything, and move forward. We're just not there yet. Um, again, you know, you watch CNN and you want to hit your heads with all this spinning and all this political craziness that nobody buys beat everybody watches. You know, I myself am guilty. I joke about this all the time. I watch The Real Housewives. I love those shows, but I shouldn't be watching that. <laughs> it's stupid. But there's a part of me that you know, enjoys a little bit watching that duality play out because I'm human too. So we have that, and I grew up that way. So I have memories of sort of that energy that I laugh at, but it's really not healthy. Uh, it really doesn't offer anything pr productive value. Um, of course, I watch other things like documentaries too, <laughs> what you think. But the point is, we all have our space where we're still struggling with trying to figure out duality, dealing with all that stuff and observing all of this. So everything that is created, you create, right? Everything that the fourth dimensional reality, to get to fifth dimensional, we have to go through this sort of sharpening of duality to get us to get over it and just accept unconditional love. And um, so that's why everything's ratcheting up. Now, to try to bring this into a, a focus, I don't know how much time we have left, as light workers, the more evolved we are, and I'm certainly nowhere near perfect, oh God. But is to continually serve to um, make the intention and the effort to send light, to hold light, even though you may not be perfect, even though you're going through all chaotic stuff. I've gone through so much technical stuff, as you know, over this past two weeks, I want to kill every technical company, computer, phone, I want to kill them. But you know, it's part well, of- we're not broadcasting live tonight for the simple reason that my server there you crashed go. five there you days go. ago. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And I know you've been through a lot of uh, crap and you, you are doing, trying to do all the service. So it's all part of restructuring. And uh, technically, technically, all across the board, things are being restructured. You've alluded to this, that the infrastructure of our technology is so fragile. And uh, our infrastructure and our roads are fragile. I want to ask you, though, um, yeah. is it enough, and, and, and to somebody that may ask you this, is it enough for us to just be, elevate our consciousness and to do this light work when the people that are really making the decisions, when you look at a movie like Thrive and you see the ramifications of decisions that are made by people in power, people with money that, that are basically what you might want to, call focusing on those seven deadly sins and living from there and, and they don't obviously want to let go of that those are the people that need to not be doing that anymore it's not these the little person in the field that's going to church and praying to god and elevating their 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 lives i mean how, how do we deal with that how do we get them yeah. to stop making and, and to see that there's a reason to 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 create a life that doesn't revolve around massive banks controlling everything and, and power residing that because that's well, definitely that's, fear and they don't want to let go of that of course well this is a whole s systemic and life life's long process that's culminating can we shifting. can we as individuals affect them well do you think what's going to happen is your source is going to affect it you know it's the mahatma is coming down religious structure is going to break down political structure is going to break down money systems are going to be organized this is all part of the divine plan because so there will be even more chaos then oh if, totally going to be totally so much more banks 
Collapse. Oh, you see it now. Banks. You Internet know, how, goes down. How, well, maybe not. Well, you see, but how many bank people are being caught out and, and being arrested? So all this stuff is unfolding. How many priests are being caught out by what they're doing? You know, we won't go there. But, you know, all this stuff is going on all across the board. And the point I'm trying to make is it's a fine line. The, 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 the divine plan is there. It's unfolding. Right. It doesn't it's not that it doesn't care. It's that it has to do what it needs to do. Your job as a light worker, if you will, hmm. uh, Jim, should you just your mission, Jim, should you decide to accept it, right. is to go with the flow instead of fighting it. So if I, as a person who puts themselves out there as trying to help people in a spiritual sense in whatever capacity I can, if I turn around, yes, I may be silly and watch Real Housewives and, and be dumb once in a while, but if I don't make a concerted effort to hold light and send light and allow others to hold light and send light, with my knowledge and ability and consciousness that I've developed from my own experience, I'm part of the problem, not part of the solution. Just because I'm a, a, a healer by profession doesn't make me any better or worse than you or any janitor or executive or, or whatever. The point is, it's about, it's, it's about the election. I'm trying not to get political and religious and, and put my own views in it. But people say this election is about the economy, the economy, and you're talking about the American election if you're watching overseas. But really, to me, it's about consciousness. What consciousness do you want to go in with to the ascension? Do you want the consciousness that the right presents or the left presents? This is really about consciousness because none of these uh, people are perfect saints and none of these systems are perfect. And neither man, if you will, can do much other than what the Bilderbergs are, are and the Rockefellers and all these people are doing behind the scenes anyway, mm -hmm. uh, these power people. And so uh, that level will change when the mass gets fed up enough and en masse, individually and collectively, holds light. This is what people aren't getting. You cannot do anything. All you can do is hold light, send light, allow light, help others to hold light. And as that reverberates and that builds and grows, that creates a momentum, which, what does light do when it turns on? It dispels the dark and the roaches go scurrying. But the light doesn't do anything. It just comes on. See, in the dark, a lot of things can happen. Right. In the light, everything's transparent. Right. So the point is, we have to hold light. Now, you can do that in a variety of ways. You can do that in one system or another. Technology is actually making that even more possible. There, every single person is carrying a camera, and you pretty much are, can be exposed at any moment in, in your and life. And they are. As it's ha happened even in, in the uh, uh, political uh, yeah, elections. Yeah, the voter fraud, the one character, the cell phone. Uh, you know, cops are shown beating up people that they weren't before. Right. And, and, you know, it, that's another thing. The, the technology is good. You know, I always said religion and technology was destruction of man. It's going to be destruction of mankind. I used to say that. I'm trying not to say that anymore because I don't want to put that out there. But technology, it's not about a system. It's about how it's abused. The human nature is to abuse a system. The problem is we can't be sheeps anymore. We have to stand up and we have to say enough is enough. You have to get out and vote. And, and, and you know, you have to even religions throughout uh, uh, humanity's history have been tools for the elevation of consciousness when used properly. You know, it's 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 of those course. people that take it into the negative and well, that's what it was that's... created for. Yeah, and, and, and Jesus of... said, "You're the rock upon which I will build my church." He didn't mean abusing young boys and stealing money. Right, meant, well, yeah. you know what I mean. He meant build a church and and what? Yeah, that's one specific instance. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm saying I'm being facetious, but the point is, is that you know that's what it is. But re but religion itself, the answer is not religion. It's not technology. It's not even spirituality. The answer really ultimately is consciousness. But we are. When you hold a higher consciousness and you sustain it, your whole world shifts. I know from the brief glimpses, you know, I have a very powerful teacher who's very strong about getting his students on point. And he did not let me get away with anything, which you know, I didn't like it at first, but I'm sort of grateful he did. Right. But the point is, is that, you know, when you're in Ireland and you're going through these experiences, you're in this space. And then when you come back to reality, you go through this whole crashing, it's called, and restructuring that many people don't experience. They just go through life. They have no concept of what it is to stretch your consciousness and then have to come back and deal with X, Y, Z and, and A, B, C in the real world and react in a different way. This is what the spiritual path is. That's why the spiritual path is hard. That's why people don't want to go gravitate towards because it requires a tremendous stretching of consciousness. It changes you physically. It changes you emotionally. It detoxes you. It sheds you. It's emotional. It's visceral. It's 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 hard, <laughs> you know. Uh, there's it, but it's also great. 
It's also to feel and experience that oneness with source consciously in your body for any sustained length of time is fantastic. Anybody, I myself have had a near-death experience, so uh, that's when I started to develop and I came back from that and other people I've talked to who've had near-death experience have recorded the same thing. You, when you see you know, Jesus waving at the tunnel or whoever it is and then you go back, right. you're changed. I was dramatically changed from that point on. Uh, you know, before all I cared about, you know, was, that was, you know, the stuff that everybody else cared about. As soon as that happened, and I was in my Saturn return, I was in my 29 or whatever it was. And yes, I had a spiritual bent and I did a lot of things, but it never was the focus it was. When I came out of that, my whole awareness was different. I couldn't go back to the person I was. I wanted to. My ego wanted to take me back there mm -hmm. to the comfort of that and the desire of that, but I couldn't do it. And it's been on journey ever since. So, um, not everybody needs to have a near-death experience. What I'm trying to show is you don't need a near-death experience to become advanced in consciousness. You, but you have to little by little accept more source consciously in your daily life. And it's different than prayer. The old paradigm was prayer, and there's nothing wrong with prayer. But prayer is sort of like the secret, pr focusing on what you don't have and asking for it. Intention is I intend. There's a difference. Yeah. And the shift from prayer, oh, please save me, save me, Mary, Mary or Allah or whoever you save me, Buddha, save me, save me, save me, is pushing away the very thing you want. It's not doing it consciously, but the energy can't. That's why prayers are answered in a different way. But if you intend, I am now in divine service and I am abundant, let's say, that you automatically feel shift. And if you sustain that, like uh, Esther Hicks says, if you 17 seconds, we stay with positive thought, you immediately start to see a difference in something. And so it's really about what we think we are. So it's about that shift in conscious. So you're seeing Middle East fall apart. You're seeing the presidential election, all the craziness around it. You're seeing children being abused. You're seeing animals uh, dying. You're seeing the 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 uh, planet being destroyed. the planet being destroyed. You know, you see that movie People home. financially in crises with their home, losing homes. How about people dying in pockets of thousands all over? Earthquakes. Right. Look at Japan, what they've taken on. They contract it. And there's still more earthquakes. And what, you know, but they, for some reason, contract it. We can't judge that karma. And how many times have I sent light and other people all around the world, a lot more than me, have sent light. And that's all you can do. But you know you've sat in the workshops when a group of people, 20, 20 percent send the violet flame to Egypt, let's say. And I do want to talk about uh, what the project that I have going to this help this effect, if you don't mind, is it makes you feel better. You send the light. Your intention allows the light to focus just like it focuses for you there. And it actually has more of an effect because you're saying, OK, you want to help these people. I'll bring more here. And if a thousand people did, and 10,000 and 20,000, that situation would literally change overnight. Right. It's called the hundred monkey theory. In, uh, in, yes, but in a spiritual the, sense, it's even more powerful. Right. It's even more powerful because source is directing it. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And the hundred monkey is source working through in a collective sense. Yeah. We call it hundred monkey. So, um, you know, when we were in, so this is what I'm saying. We have to, no matter what's going on, you send light to it. That's where you could send the violet flame. You could send Mahatma. If you don't know what that is, white light. Send white light. See, you know, surround it, whatever area you want with so white light. So regardless of the crisis in the person's personal life, in, in the context of... The, the global community, that, to leave our, our, our viewers now with uh, a tool, that's the tool, is to just yes. do that, and that will have a, a, an effect on... Because your intention as a conscious being, empowered being, who is serving the light consciously, is adding to the effulgence of light that is attempting, and that is coming to this planet, which is what the rising star represents. Now and all the energies represent. That's why I do the work I do. So, you know, you can go to many people if you want to check out our videos, no shameless plug. Uh, you can go online and you can learn more about it. You can come to the workshop, you can have the sessions. This is why I do what I do is to help people access that. So when they do it on their own, it's that much stronger and easier and they can see over time. It's just a matter of learning a new habit. Yeah. Instead of separating from source, which we've done for so long, now you're just gonna say, I am that, I am that I am. I am presence, please be present. Violet flame, please be present. To the point where you don't even have to do that. But for now, we're in that, and that's your spiritual lifeline. That intention to allow, it's right there. There's no reaching for it anymore. When the planet was dense, when we were in the dark ages, when we were in that space, you had to reach for it. You had to pray for 30 hours. You had to take an herb to get intoxicated to reach the gods. You had to do all this stuff to even 
get started. Now you don't have to do it. Mayans had a, thought they had to lop off thousands of heads and rip hearts out. Just to, you, None of that stuff is ne necessary anymore. But we still have karmic memories and karmic residual things that are not resolved based on all that energy. So that when we come back to being a light worker strongly, especially professionally, we go through a tremendous crisis of guilt, of shame, of a charging should we charge, of ego stuff, am I better, am I special, oh, was I Peter in last lifetime, or am I just an old late? You know, all this stuff that rolls around. So the average person isn't going through that. It turns them off when they hear see all this stuff and they retreat more. That's why it's very important to be in integrity uh, when you are in, a, even at this level, a public position to put on a, a, a free video. You have to be in integrity, whether the people agree with me or not. I know in my conscience that I'm in integrity and that's what I need to know. And I put myself into place where I make sure I am. Mm. Um, and so... Uh, when the rising star, which is basically uh, represents man's full ascension and coming into fullness of their power, and of course this is the symbol for it here, and um, these are the other sacred symbols, Prema Agni, Divine Masculine, if you will, Prema Dharma Datu, Divine Feminine, and we have videos of that, which you've so brilliantly filmed, uh, as tools to help you, but they just represent the consciousness of what's happening and how to relate to that and immediately access it without feeling separate from it. And that's why they're here, whether it's a jewelry, whether it's the symbol itself, whether you do the healing, it's that's all it is. And uh, so we were in Ireland uh, every year, Derek, my teacher, does this big Ireland trip to help mm -hmm. the world. And we, uh, many of us gather and it's extremely powerful and intense. And this last year uh, it was in the Rising Star teacher training because I always retake that every year to, to refresh and to reboot. And there was about 10 people being initiated and there was about 40 of us that were redoing it. So it was one of the biggest ones ever. So it was 50 people in this room intensely connecting with the rising star source ascension energy. And it was so uh, powerful that Derek had allowed, it had been allowed, I can't really know if I could divulge anything, but it just it was a total reboot of the whole system all around the world. We sent it out, whatever. And then, um, you know, he said to us, the teachers, who hold the lineage for this energy to go out into the world, that we should do a rise star initiation every day for some teddy bear, give it to a kid, something, you know, plan, if the planet, send it out, whatever. And so uh, it's hard to do that sometimes for myself even because I'm so busy and got so much going on. But I got uh, guided to do uh, this project, which I call GEARST, Global Initiative for Rising Star Teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> basically what it is, it's... Uh, I put it out there in you know, the newsletters and everything for SQ Wellness, our organization. Whatever Rising Star teacher wants to help at the same time, once a month, we're going to gather wherever you are, whether you're in a group, whether you're home, wherever you are, and we're going to collectively not just send light or healing, but send the initiation to a specific area of the planet that needs help. And then throughout the month, it'll hopefully motivate us to keep doing that. And we could choose and vote on it once a month. So the first one is going to be December 22nd, 2012, the first day of the new age. Three in the afternoon, wherever people are, whether in Ireland, we have people in Long Island, we have people all over the place. Do you have to be involved with uh, the Rising Star in order to participate? I'm, I'm going to get to that. Uh, if, if I will. And um, so at that time, it's going to be the first one, and the teachers are going to send initiation. Now, the practitioners who hold a practitioner level initiation, a practitioner can stay and hold the space. They are not actually empowered to perform the actual initiation, but they can hold the space and add to it. And even SQ Wellness members can hold good intentions and send it because they're part of that lineage. So it's not that it's an exclusive thing. It's really a concentrated focus through uh, the, the process and organization of SQ Wellness and the Rise Star Initiation to fully focus powerful, intense energy together and initiate certain parts of the world. So I, because I initiated it and started it, uh, I chose Aleppo and Syria because Aleppo is the folk, even though Ham is the center of the fight, and Aleppo's really been the center where most of the uh, horrors, if you will, have concentrated, at least recently. And so mm. we'll send it to Aleppo, the city of Aleppo. So yes, you could send healing and light any time of the day and night, and that's all great, and I've done that, and a lot of people are doing that. But to collectively send a powerful initiation to have the rising star over light, let's say the city of Aleppo, will create a powerful transformation of consciousness at the collective level. How that will trickle down depends on source because we're not the doer. We can only serve in the physical to anchor 
source energy through intention of service and love. Mm -hmm. And that's our mastery. So this is a project that I've started um, and I'm hoping that it takes off and once a month all the teachers, and I've already got great response, like you know, 20 or 5 people already want to do it, they're on board. And uh, we're hoping to get all the teachers at some point. Sometimes you won't be able to. And all the practitioners of involvement also brings the organization together. So I'm very excited about it because we hold a strong lineage of pure source to source energy and trying to disseminate that on the planet. So we then have a responsibility if we're holding that and, and, and creating that uh, to implement it where it's needed. And it's now is the time. We can't rest on our laurels. Uh, you know, a lot of the teachers hold the energy and they're fantastic, but they don't practice regularly. They just hold the energy. Mm -hmm. So this also gives them an opportunity to participate. So that's a big project uh, that I'm hoping to uh, take forward uh, in support of mission and, and, and source energy. And then, of course, I have all the other stuff I do um, yeah. and, and, you know, we all do. Right. But, um, you know, that's that's where it's at. That's what we're supposed to be doing, because whether you do it through a rising star initiation or you have a nice group in, you know, Dubuque, Iowa, or wherever it is, sitting together, sending light. Right. It doesn't matter. It's the light is light. Source is source. Right. Well, actually, I, yeah. I hope to be able to uh, organize these types of groups as one of the one of my long term goals for the Bridge of Truth is to do that. Uh, we're just just about out of time now, and um, sure. I, I want our viewers to first of all, I want to encourage people. As, uh, besides um, the spiritual work that that, that you can do. Uh, I, I also encourage people to, to get active uh, with physical uh, work. And if you think of something that could possibly help, uh, whether it's something as simple as organizing a project to clean up your neighborhood or you want to contribute uh, in, in some way, I, I encourage people to do that because I think that's that's really the, uh, the ultimate goal of the movie Thrive, which yes. they really talk about. In other words, you, it, it, it's, it's great to balance the spiritual with the physical, that while you're raising consciousness, also take part in projects that are consciousness -raising. But the point is, do it from the right consciousness. That's the trick. Right. Because if you're doing it from the consciousness of fear, even though you think you're helping, you're actually creating more of the problem. Right. Because you're, so do it from the space of compassion as much as you can. Yes, we all love animals. No one sees the animals suffer. But don't do it out of fear or anger, because you're actually doing, right. not helping even though you might be immediately putting a bandage on a bullet wound. So what you're saying is accurate. But it, the point is, we have to shift into consciousness first, not action first. Action first was the old paradigm. Well, actually, that's, that's a, the principle of spiritual preceding physical, and I believe yeah. in that. But uh, it, I, I think, you know, don't feel that we can't take some sort of action because I think that's all part of it. No, and, we, we should not yeah. bury our head in the sand. I'm and, very big an advocate. And of actually, that. We're, we're just about ready to wrap this, but I'm going to have Anthony back. Uh, you, you guys know that we've been doing videos on the, uh, the uh, creation energies, and we're going to be actually putting out a series of meditations of the entire uh, divine 12 race. rays. And uh, we'll start probably with the initial seven and hopefully have that. Uh, up by the end of the year and when we're actually ready to to re release those i want to have anthony back and we'll get more specifically into that because that's in an, another area yeah uh, but i gotta tell all you all of this is so much it's so much you yeah. know and, and you know i really i'm really grateful that you came and you, you had an opportunity to talk a little I'm bit grateful more to have this, this opportunity you know yeah and uh so I think uh, if there's anything, any last word you would like to say? No, I'm glad you sort of brought that point out, uh, what you did, and astutely. And just the best we can do now with this crazy dynamic going on is to marry action with consciousness, but do it shift. The shift that we must make is consciousness first, simple alignment with source, everything out of love. If you're not doing something out of love, it's not good action. If you're doing something out of fear that you might be well-intentioned, well it's, it's, it's not good action. So it's really about that shift because that is the ascension. Mm -hmm. That is it in a nutshell because it will manifest in all the sundry and myriad ways it's supposed to. Right. And, and, and the major religions, whether it's Buddhists with the, uh, the Eightfold Path, Jesus, and the, the, the Beatitudes, I mean, really, that's the, the great spiritual uh, teachers teach It's this. just simple truth. We just the point is that was all preparation. Now we're at the moment. We're, the, we're at the starting gate. We have to go through the door and take the next step. Where that's going to lead us, right. we don't know. Right. But we're here now. If we don't exactly. take that step, 
Right. Who is? Well, we're here to take that step, and uh, <laughs> hopefully you will take it with us. So uh, in closing then, I'd like to thank you all for uh, watching. Thank you. And may all your journeys be truthful till the next time we meet on the Bridge of Truth.